waste of the week involves an expenditure in Afghanistan, where we know we have troops and commitments over there. And the request came forward that we need cargo planes. We need planes to transfer cargo around between our bases into different parts uh, of Afghanistan. And so the, uh, the decision was made to provide 20 cargo planes to uh, uh, fulfill that mission. Uh, for some reason, uh, the Department of Defense went to the country of Italy and said, um, uh, maybe because they're part of the coalition and they felt some obligation to, you know, uh, buy some equipment from, from Italy. Uh, and so they bought uh, 20 uh, Italian uh, uh, cargo planes. The uh, purpose here was to support the Afghan Air Force in, as I said, transferring infra, uh, troops and transferring uh, uh, equipment uh, around the country. Um, at the time, the Afghans had uh, old, uh, uh, out-of-date, uh, Soviet-Russian-era Russian planes, and the Department, Department of Defense wanted to replace those. So again, I said they went to, they went to uh, Italy to purchase these. Now, the purchase price for 20 of these cargo planes was $486 million. Uh, that's a lot of money. Um, but I'm not here to say they should have paid less or they should have paid more. That's what the price was, and, and that was negotiated. The problem was, uh, and this is documented by the inspector general, two inspector generals who have looked at this program and said, whoa, wait a minute, uh, got a problem here, guys. Uh, two of them looked at this, and here's, what this, here's the story. First, they didn't buy 20, they only bought 16. Now the price was 486, $486 million for 20 planes. Somehow only 16 arrived. I'm not sure what happened to those other four. But there were problems from the very beginning. It became abundantly clear early on that these planes really were not made to fly in the kind of conditions that existed in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a, a lot of desert, a lot of sand, a lot of wind, and these planes apparently just had all kinds of problems flying in that atmosphere. Now you would have thought maybe since we were there, we kind of knew this because our own planes fly in this atmosphere. So somebody basically uh, didn't, I think, do their homework and say, you know, before we pay out $486 billion, uh, a million dollars, maybe we ought to make sure that these planes that we're buying that are replacing the old Soviet planes, they know they don't work. Maybe we ought to check and make sure that in this atmosphere here, because maybe we've had problems with some of our own planes, we ought to make sure that they're capable of uh, holding up under this kind of conditions. Well, as it turned out, uh, they flew the planes for only nine months. And in that nine months, they only accumulated 235 hours of flight time. And one of the reasons for that is because they were constantly in the maintenance shop uh, having repairs being made because of the conditions that they were flying in. Uh, the, the planes were purchased on the basis that they could get 4,500 hours out of each plane. And that would carry a lot of cargo, and I can understand why uh, they wanted that. Uh, but because the problems that they had were uh, so uh, extensive, uh, it turned out that they needed a lot of spare parts. And when they looked at terms of, in terms of what it would cost to uh, buy new spare parts for these planes, uh, the total came up to another $200 million. So on top of the 486, another 200 million would have to be added. To, and, and they didn't have the money to do that, so they said, well, let's do this. Let's take six of the remaining 16 planes and take them out of, uh, 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 off the airfield and we will tear them down, and we will get the spare parts out of those six. So now we're down to 10. It started with 20. Somehow they only got 16. Now they decommissioned six planes so that they could get the spare parts to put into the other planes so they wouldn't have to spend the $200 million. So now we're down to 10 planes at a cost of $486 million. Dollars, But um, even then, they had 
they continued to have problems, and so they decided we're going to scrap the whole thing. Now you'd have thought, well, maybe somebody somewhere in different conditions would want to buy those planes because we're down to 10, or you take spare parts and so forth and so on, maybe, maybe salvage the, uh, a, a few more than that. Uh, but no, uh, the decision was made to scrap those planes and decommission them. And so the next step was, can't use them? Let's just tear them apart. So there's a nice picture of what happens to the plane. Do you see this uh, uh, Swedish, <laughs> here we are in Afghanistan, uh, spending a lot of money to try to save that country. Um, you'd have thought this would have said John Deere, made in the USA. I just noticed this. It's Volvo, I think that's made in Sweden. Planes, made in Italy. And here's the result, nice pile of scrap. So they said, well, we ought to salvage something here. And so they said, well, let's sell the scrap. So the planes that were paid for, spent, where we spent $486 million, were sold for scrap, as scrap, for six cents a pound. Six cents a pound. And we got retrieved $32,000. Spent $486 million, um, decommissioned six planes, that, uh, so we could get spare parts. So that went down to 10 planes. That didn't work, so they just took a bulldozer to that and scrapped the thing. And now this uh, Swedish-made machine here is scrapping it, picking it up, probably putting it in a container and selling it for six cents a pound. You know, I come down here every week, and these stories just become mind-boggling. Uh, and the taxpayer hears about these stories. And, you know, some people said, you know, in this atmosphere, maybe we shouldn't be exposing all this. No, we're exposing it so we can stop this, so that we can have an efficient, effective run government doing the essential things that federal government needs to do and not getting itself into this constant week after week after week. And look, I mean, there's been books put out here. My former colleague Tom Coburn put out a scrap, I mean, a scrapbook, <laughs> put out... <laughs> My former colleague put out the waste book, uh, basically documenting hundreds of billions of dollars of waste, fraud, and abuse. And he stepped down from office uh, two years ago. We miss him. Uh, I'm trying to just carry on in a, probably a less effective way that he did, but uh, carry on exposing what's happening with Americans' tax dollars. Every day, people haul themselves out of bed, start the coffee, get in the car, go to work, come home, try to save money, look at their paycheck, the amount of money that's being deducted for, deducted for taxes, and say, you know, okay, well, maybe that's what we need to do uh, to protect our country and provide for programs. And then they learn about stuff like this and say, what am I going to work for? Just to turn this money over to Washington so that they can spend it in ways and make decisions like this. So this is one of 40 some presentations here on the Senate floor, and I'm gonna keep doing this as long as I stay in the Senate um, because our people need to know and they need to put pressure on their representatives and they need to think about this before the next person they elect to walk into the White House who's going to at least have the courage and the will to address our fiscal problem in a way that's not going to put our next generations in such dire situations. So with that, Mr. Uh, President, I add to our ever-growing list of waste, fraud, and abuse another $486 million, now totaling $162 billion, 764 million, 55,817 dollars. Think how that money could be used for essential programs like Zika, uh, things that were true, Ebola, uh, research at Na uh, National Institutes of Health, um, education, paving roads, doing infrastructure repairs, any number of things that need to be done, think how that money could be better used 
than selling it for scrap for $6 a pound. Or think about that money that could be returned to the taxpayer that they wouldn't have to pay in taxes if we could just simply run a much more efficient, effective government here. Spending is a huge issue. It needs to be addressed in this election. The American people need to be aware of where we stand. And where we stand today is just uh, substantially worse than when I arrived back in my second term in the Senate just five and a half years ago. Uh, Mr. President, I think um, with that, uh, I will yield the floor and I note the absence of the quorum.